Okay, hi everyone. It's uh, time for two things. Number one, it's time to reveal my new short haircut. Eight years of long hair, gone. Anyway, item two is this. A kind of uh, follow-up or part two to my recent video on my nail bag. What's in the carpenter's toolbox? So let's crack on. Okay, so a couple of things before we begin. First, I'm rocking the pink shorts for you today. Thought it might just uh, jazz things up a little bit for this video. Um, and second thing, my phone is on a stand or a tripod just in front of me on a table, which is recording this video. Every afternoon here in Provence, we get a little breeze that comes through. It's fair to say my tripod isn't the most stable thing on earth. Um, so yeah, it might rock around a little bit, might be a little bit drunk, um, and it might even topple over. So we'll just try it out and see how we go. Anyway, uh, moving on to the main topic of discussion, my Carpenter's Toolbox Tour. So uh, let's jump into it. So as I made mention uh, in my video on my nail bag, um, last time I showed this toolbox at the end and I made mention that it was used as a bit of a um, supplementary tool that I could take to a job site with me and have there with hand tools in it, uh, hand tools that I wouldn't necessarily always need in my nail bag but tools that were available to use when I needed them. So this is by no means overloaded but it definitely carries some spares or some additional things that very handy to me and for me to get my job done in an efficient and effective way. So the toolbox itself, 30 euros from a Brocant market in France, probably middle of last year. Wooden construction, pretty conventional, traditional looking uh, toolbox, mostly like what most people would imagine or have seen a carpenter's toolbox to look like. And yeah, great little fine so that I could contain all my loose hand tools that I wasn't going to be carrying in my nail bag. And just due to its age, I have shored it up a little bit with some additional screws around the place, just so that if it was a bit on the heavy side, I wouldn't have to worry about the whole thing falling apart. Okay, now the moment you've all been waiting for, let's jump into the contents of the toolbox tour. So, six spring-loaded clamps. I just love clamps. So, I don't need to explain what a clamp is and what it's used for, but I just like to have those nice and handy on the side there. They're just hanging on and not in the way. So, really good. Earmuffs, talked about those last time. And they'll often be on the back of my nail bag or on my head or here. Then, I've like put a bit of wire for a bottle opener. You never know when you need to crack a nice cold Coca-Cola, do you? So that's on there for convenience. Um, what else? So, you might remember in my nail bag, I've got a, a seven inch one of these. Well, this is the 12 inch version. And I was using this pretty much all the time um, up until my nail bag came from Australia. Um, not too many weeks ago now. Um, so yeah, this obviously wouldn't fit in my nail bag because it's too big, but more than happy to reside in my toolbox where it's always available if I need something just a little bit bigger. So that's, and it's Swanson too. So when only the best will do. Um, next thing, classic Carpenter's Tri-Square. Every Carpenter's probably got one of these and so do I. So that's good. Um, I have a small Makita spirit level, finding plumb lines, finding level lines, you can even find a 45 degree, so perfectly 45 when the bubble is in between the lines, so that's that. Um, Phone charger, of course. Two pairs of gloves. I actually made a really good score the other day and I found a brand new pair of high flex gloves. So, pretty.
pretty happy with that. By the way, I'm just filming this in one continuous take, so uh, bear with me. Any mistakes will be on the record. Um, eyewear, bam. Say no more about eyewear and why I carry eyewear. Um, so I have these dowels and I use these dowels and wrap sandpaper around them to smooth off any sort of curved finished work or finished woodwork or pieces that I'm working on. So a couple of different sizes there. I find that can be sometimes handy um, to carry in the kit. So that's what they're for. I randomly have a spare handle for a file just in case this one because this one's got a big crack in it so I just have that in there just in case you know um, masking tape everyone's always like looking for masking tape so whenever you need masking tape just come to see me and I'll, uh, I'll hook you up so that's that and I have a bunch of small pencils these are actually like from a golf club I think um, and yeah, these ones have got like little clips on them too. So you can like pin them on yourself. So that's um, pretty good. But I use these for my little, um, remember last time you might've saw my little gold, it's not real gold, um, scribing tool. So that's what they're for. Pretty handy to have as a normal sort of pencil doesn't fit in there cause it's too thick. Um, what else? Corking nozzles. I'm like obsessed with corking nozzles. So yeah, I just have corking nozzles just hanging around. So yeah, that's that. I've got a two part epoxy, which is handy. This stuff will glue anything. So I just have that in there. Just, you know, never know when you'll need epoxy at 3 a.m. in the morning. So just have that. Um, Makita headless pins. This is for my cordless pin nailer, which is probably another time, another video. But there's like 25 mil pins and there's 10,000 of them. And as you can see, they're very, very small. So I feel like I'm never going to run out of those, which is good. Um, I've got a plaster rasp. Maybe you need to just shave down plaster. Um, just handy tool to have and a very good investment for probably all of about 10 euros. So yeah, great. Um, remember my little chalk box or chalk line last time? Well, this is the actual chalk to refill it. So obviously worthwhile carrying in the toolbox because if you need it, it's there. And then I just have a box with like bits of sandpaper, Packers, um, sandpaper, 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 and some steel wool, which is handy to um, rub down woodwork to key in for paintwork and things like that. And yeah, just some random screws and whatever in there. So I just keep that inside. This is actually good, by the way, because it allows me to clean it out. I'll take it all out so I can clean it out and then restack it in there neatly. So yeah, it's a pretty good exercise actually. Then this little clip holds on a plumb bob, which I extended. I got this from a market as well. But a plumb bob is a tool that due to gravity gives you a perfectly perpendicular line down to the earth. And not only that, you can use this. You can see in the top of the square that there's a little uh, notch in there so you can use this to get any angle you want to get based on a level line so yeah great for um, a number of things and a really ancient and traditional way of finding plumb lines other than using one of these so yeah it's like two euros so why not you know um, now on this side I've put in I'll show you on this side I've screwed in 
boom, boom, two pieces of pipe. Because if I didn't, all this would just be rocking and rolling around in there just to hold all of these hand tools, which are probably not the most important thing, but as important as anything else in this box, I guess. So anyway, let's go through these. So the two pipes that I added to here contain the following. First of all, a little tack hammer. This was like eight euro, I think. It's great for knocking in little nails um, when you're refurbishing windows to holding glass. So, but you know, you can use it for whatever else you want to use it for, but it's normally just smaller sort of style work that you would use one of these. Um, nothing with ooh, heavy blows. No. Cat's paw or pinch bar, levering, levering, nail puller. Um, yeah, great tool. This one's pretty heavy duty, probably a bit too big, but you know, it's not too heavy, but it's just sort of good to have as part of the toolbox tour. Um, what else? I've got a file. It's not. So, did I or did I not say at the start of this video that the wind might blow the phone stand over? Like I said, the phone stand isn't the uh, most robust and heavy thing in the world. Anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, two little files. So one's a bit more heavy duty, like a rasp. And this one's more of a fine one. And I use this more or less to sharpen teeth on my hand saws. So like I said, it's got a bit of a crack in it. Um, that's why. As I was saying, that's why I carry a spare handle, just in case that breaks. But to be honest, it looks worse than what it is. Hey, by the way, let me know if you like this one shoot thing going on with uh, the risk of the phone blowing over, whether I should edit it out, continue to leave it in there, whether it makes it more entertaining, you tell me. So yeah, they're the two um, files. I have a small little chisel with some lovely detail, but it probably needs a good sharpen this one. So yeah, it's got a bit of a gouge in, uh, in the end. Um, so yeah, that's that. What else? Nail pullers. Handy to have. I don't see the point of uh, carrying them. Um, I don't see the point of carrying them uh, in my nail bag because they are big and they are a bit heavy. And you know what? I don't often need these. Don't believe me. Multi grips. Multi grip pliers adjustable bam say no more um is a smaller pinch bar but it's like probably too weak but you know what it's a bit bent it's not actually the shape of what it's supposed to be i've kind of abused it but um anyway it's in there it's still made the cut so yeah it's good spatula i love this spatula amazing so yeah any smoothing work it's had a bit of um chem set and you know a lot of other things putty a lot of other things on it um but yeah good to have good to have good to no not just for troweling sort of work it's just good for a number of other things too and then i have a, a bevel a sliding bevel um this is amazing to find angles so if you want to find the angle of something you run it up one side and then you run it on one side. if there's an obscure angle you want to find you run it up one side and then the surface goes 
against that and then this surface goes against the other side and then you can set the saw hi jade <laughs> you can set the saw um, for that exact angle to make a cut so yeah surely there's a way to stop that happening with some weight but it's a bit awkward i could explain but it's just not worth it anyway so yeah that's the um the main aim or well, the main use for a bevel i think it's gonna fly away again the phone not me then a shifter everyone knows what a shifter is i hope you know what a shifter is that's that about the 43rd texture that i own i have a spoon just for when i eat my breakfast um good to have with all the dust and that on it it tastes great so no this is actually a lie um this is for window putty to smooth out window putty um don't often use it but it's small it takes up no room and easy to have in the kit when you need it most and when you eat it, need to eat most too um soup at lunch times in the winter you can probably get by with a little bit of a flavored taste on the spoon couldn't you uh then i have a little brush i don't know how this ended in up there but it's kind of good to dust off sort of fine work or if you're doing fine woodwork painting or something you want to just dust it off to get the surface clean um yeah a thousand uses for these so that's why that's there we're getting to the end tiny little screwdriver it's actually a bit bent but still does the job I'm not a jeweler but this would be a good jewelry one to fix watches i'm not a jeweler um what's this a 16 mil short auger bit just because i like auger bits uh, cool old flat blade screwdriver with a wooden handle so I did something I should have done a few minutes ago and then I put a heavy thing on the bottom of the tripod so it's not going to fall over now it might wobble but it's not going to fall over anyway as I was saying wooden handled old wooden handled flat blade screw flat blade screwdriver and I got two other ones smaller one with a plastic handle magnetized and Phillips head with a plastic handle magnetized and then I saved the best till last um, I got this given to me as a gift. This is an old measuring tool. It's 12 inches long, so one foot. Obviously folds in half with this beautiful little detail and brass. And it's got this pin here, a pin here, which go into little holes here and here. So when you fold it, just fits together nicely as you can see it's all lined with little beautiful little nails and yeah really old imperial but don't really use it that much but i just think it's an amazing old tool and i always think about i don't always think about it but i think about it sometimes about when it was made who made it how they made it and the tools they use to make it and how old it is so yeah really cool so yeah so that's it I've got nothing else to uh show you and that's it gang you can see the pipes screwed in in all their glory now and if you'd ever wanted to see the bottom of a carpenter's toolbox this is your moment here so yeah that's all. Now I just got to pack up this mess and put it all back in there in some sort of order 
and once it's in there try and keep it in order so whether that happens well I'll let you make your mind up on that one so So that's it everyone, thank you uh, for watching if you made it this far, I hope you found this um, mildly entertaining, I hope you enjoyed the pink shorts and I hope you enjoyed the haircut too. Let me know uh, what you think about the haircut in the comments, I'd love to um, see whether or not you're going to make me regret cutting my long hair off or whether or not you're happy with uh, the short do. So yeah, anyway Jay wants to take me for a little walk through the uh, old town now. So. Um, try and get that done before sunset and before some dinner so uh it should be uh relaxing maybe and uh yeah thanks again for watching and i'll uh, talk to you in the next one go well